Now, the measured current value is pretty close to the actual measured value. Both the sensors are calibrated and now my Arduino home energy meter is ready for the final testing. So let's go ahead and do it. This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 where the world designs electronics and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine for electronic parts. In today's episode, you will learn how to make Arduino home energy monitor using CD clamp current sensor, ZMPT101B AC voltage sensor, and an SSD1306 I2C supported OLED display module. Instead of using the Arduino Nano, you can also use Arduino Uno. After calculating voltage, current, and power, you can easily calculate the units. You can calculate how much electricity you have used in a day or even in an entire month. When you have the values of voltage, current and power, you can calculate anything by using the desired formula. Anyway, in my case, I already have the main energy meter which keeps track of the units. So from here, I can calculate how much electricity I have used. You can see this energy meter is installed outside the house. And when I am at home, I have no idea when and how much load is there. And most significantly, what the voltage is. Nowadays, the temperature here ranges from 44 degrees Celsius to 49 degrees Celsius. Due to this, the voltage often drops significantly. A few days ago, the voltage dropped below 100 volts, which caused the AC compressor to malfunction because I had no idea about the voltage. If I knew about it, I would have turned off the AC. So what I want to say is that I'm going to use this Arduino home energy monitor for monitoring the voltage, current and power. So if in case there is a high load or low voltage, I can turn off sensitive loads. During the practical demonstration, I'm going to use this MPA meter for measuring the actual current and then I will compare it with the current value measured with my design Arduino home energy meter. And the same thing I'm going to do for the AC voltage. I will measure the voltage using this multimeter and then I will compare it with the voltage measured with my designed Arduino home energy meter. This testing is important for several reasons because most of the time the measured values are different from the actual values. In such situations we need to calibrate our sensors which I will explain later in this video. So without any further delay, let's get started. This is the CD claim current sensor and this is the ZMPT101B AC voltage sensor. If you want to know about their technical specifications and how to use these sensors individually, then you can watch my getting started videos. I have added links in the description. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the connections. As usual, I'm using my designed Arduino Nano and LoRa based development board, but you can also do the same exact connections on a breadboard. Forget about the relays, LoRa and 5V buzzer. Just concentrate on the connections I am about to explain. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the ZMPT AC voltage sensor to the Arduino 5V and ground. In my case, I have connected the VCC wire to the Arduino VN pin which is connected to the regulated 5V and 3A power supply. Connect the output pin of the ZMPT voltage sensor to the Arduino analog pin A0. Connect the VCC and ground wires of the AC current sensor to the Arduino 5V and ground. But in my case, I have connected it to the external 5V and 3A power supply. Connect the output signal via A to the Arduino analog pin A1. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the SSD1306 OLED display module to the Arduino 3.3V and ground pins. Connect the SCL and SDA pins to the Arduino analog pins A5 and A4 respectively. A5 is the SCL and A4 is the SDA. You can follow this circuit diagram if you want to use 5V and 3A power supply to power up your entire project or you can follow this circuit diagram if you want to use 705 voltage regulator. You can watch my video on how to make yourself this Arduino Nano development board. In this video, I have explained in detail why not to use 705 voltage regulator. First, let's install the required libraries and then we will take a look at the programming. Go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Search for the Adafruit underscore GFX library and install it. As you can see, I have already installed this library. Next, search for the Adafruit underscore SSD1306 library. I have also installed this library. 
Next, search for the ZMPT101B library and install it. The purpose of this code is to measure the AC voltage, current, power and to print all these measured values on the OLED display module. I'm not going to explain this code line by line because I have already explained it in my previous getting started videos on the AC current sensor and ZMPT AC voltage sensor. I have just combined the two codes and that's it. I have added links to all the related videos in the description. Anyway, you can download this code from our website electronicclinic.com. Now let's go ahead and start our practical demonstration. Ultim Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultim Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultim Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for the delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Easily work together with your mechanical team and forget about the days of swapping design files. Every design change stays in sync between Ultium Designer and Solidworks, PTC Crew, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360 or Siemens NX. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. One of the best things about Ultium Designer is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest component search engine, Octopart, so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. All the values are zero because I have not yet connected the voltage and current sensors. I connected the ZMPT101B voltage sensor to the AC voltage and the current sensor is not yet connected. So that's why the current value is zero and also the power value is zero. You can see the actual AC voltage on the multimeter which fluctuates between 179 and 181 volts. And you can see the measured AC voltage which is a bit off. So let's go ahead and calibrate the AC voltage sensor. You can use this potentiometer to fine tune the value. While calibrating the sensor, make sure you don't touch the AC voltage wires or the contacts on the bottom side of the PCB as it can be really dangerous. The voltage sensor has been calibrated and you can clearly see the measured voltage value is pretty close to the actual voltage. Now let's start with the current sensor. I'm going to measure the current of this bulb and let's see if I'm going to get the exact current value. The measured current value fluctuates around 0.1 amps while the actual current value on the ampere meter fluctuates between 0.31 and 0.32 amps. The difference is high so we need to calibrate the current sensor. Unlike the ZMPT101B, the CT claim current sensor doesn't have a potentiometer so we can't do calibration on the sensor side so we will have to do it through the programming. I have defined this correction factor variable to fine tune the measured current value. Keep changing this value until you are happy with the final measured value. In my case the value 9 worked and I'm going to re-upload the program. Now the measured current value is pretty close to the actual measured value both the sensors are calibrated and now my Arduino home energy meter is ready for the final testing. So let's go ahead and do it. This bulb draws around 0.33 amps. The voltage is around 174 volts and the power is around 54 watts. Next, I'm going to check the voltage, current and power of this room cooler. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.